I'm hoping by in the morning to have several uh, being wild uh, like they are. I'm going to give them some space to go back here and hide. Hey guys, I'm Dusty. Welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. Um, right now I'm doing a uh, little morning herd move. We've got, uh, these guys are basically going into pasture too, kind of getting a little bit closer to the Ponderosa barn. Uh, they were sitting down here waiting to uh, move. We just pulled them out of the burn unit and I've been rotating them around. They've been in the two different pastures, one smaller one and now a 40 acre paddock, but it's time to move them into pasture two. This is our uh, cover cut pasture that we, uh, that we planted. It was the first time ever that we did that, but we're gonna let them out right here. And then we gotta go move the calves and try to get them Try to get those guys up. Woo! Let's go! Woo! This is the pasture where the Big Joe herd wintered. And so we just moved this herd out of the burn unit in one of their big grazing management plans. Uh, they only get to graze the burn unit of 80 acres twice a year. So they got their first grazing started in April all the way through May, and then we just pulled them out at the beginning of June. Rotate them in our nine acres, and then we rotate them in the 40 acres. So they are on the move, bison are being bison, is basically what's happening here. Well, they, uh, I've got their attention. We've got about 18 babies, I think, um, and that's where we've kind of been at since, uh, our last baby was like May 27th or 25th, somewhere in there. That's kind of where we've hit so far. Um, I really need to study and see if we have any more due. But here we are. We're uh, gonna open this gate and let them in. We got some already waiting. So they know when they hear that, woo, that means it's time to go, it's time to move. So they're, uh, they're obviously in the, Moving mood, these bison will typically tell you when they're ready to go. And if they come down here and do what he's doing right there at the gate, it means it's time to move. But we're gonna put the herd of 32 in here. And what I should do right now is an easy way is get a head count as they come through. The red dogs, it's hard to get a count on them because they're so munchkin-like, little fellas. But at the adults, I can get a good count as they come through here. Well, Big Joe already got excited. <laughs> Found him a new spot to waller. He's pumped. All right, go eat, big boy. All right, so there you go. The biggest herd we've ever had right here. Um, we've got 17 babies. There's some leftover calves that were born late in 2023, early 24. Had some whoops or some um, late bloomers, but see right there, they're already on the move. They're heading together as a herd. It's fun to watch them do that. So I'm going to lock this and then you guys want to follow me to pasture nine. Well, <laughs> you guys want to follow me to the nine acres. 
it's just right up here and we're gonna go move the calves in the 40 acres because my goal is with these calves, what we're trying to do with the calves is they were in our hay meadow. Marissa and I took them over there um, and then we, man, they're on the run. We took them to the hay meadow. They've been over there by themselves and lots and lots of native grass. And we have to find a way to get them all the way back because we don't have any loadout pens on that hay meadow. So basically we're just kind of following this herd essentially is what we're doing. But it's fun to see a, you know, big herd move like that, even with the red dogs. So, all right, we're gonna lock this up and we'll go to the nine acres, see if we can get the calves moved. By the way, since I'm here, if you guys noticed, this is the area that Marissa and I rolled out with the hydra bed um, and some of these places here. So uh, that straw, some of that leftover hay, um, it's not my number one hay, but we rolled it out and I told you the bison would stomp on it. And they did and they got it smashed down really well. All for us because we've got chances of rain. And or if you missed one of the most recent videos, I came out and rolled out hay here because we had some water erosion going on. Kind of like a, examples like this right here. Some washouts where the bison sometimes will pace the fence. So got a couple of pacers or we've got um, uh, just the herd is ready to move. So they like to hang out here and look at me and <laughs> say, come get me. Um, come move me. But uh, they came through, we put this hay down, and uh, hopefully uh, when the water rushes or comes down the hill, the stomping, the pooping, and peeing on it, like they've done here, um, and the hoof traffic will slow the erosion down, and we'll get some grass built back up here. There they are. pull up in here and actually see how they've been grazing on this, some of this native grass since it's just calves. Oh, <laughs> they're coming. Come on, let's go munchkins. They're coming, didn't waste time. They're ready to move. So in this case, instead of going in the pasture, I want them to come to me. I'm gonna back out. I like this uh, big 40 acres all by themselves. There's always one that just, you know, sometimes just doesn't get it. Always one. made it back to his buddies. They're gonna run around a little bit and explore the 40 acres. So those calves haven't been on that land, that 40 acres, um, golly, since they started the weaning process back in uh, January or February. It's been a long time. So basically what I've come to do on situations like this is, this had a lot of native grass in it. This is uh, like an ideal, I think I've said this before, an ideal pasture of a lot of diverse culture of native species of plants and uh, so the big herd came in here we had them staged here for two days there's the burn unit kind of past the woods they come in they were here in this nine acres for two days we got them out on the 40 acres as soon as we could uh, so they hit it um, and, and there hadn't been animals on this in a long time 
basically it, it really didn't have any pressure over it during winter and uh, so what we uh, it's had lots of rests and we have a lot of native grasses in this patch but what I like to come and check is see how far down they're grazing um, and then so we don't want to go below six inches is kind of the height uh, is what I've learned um, so if they're grazing below six inches on this these grasses then uh, we're kind of getting into a little danger excuse me we're kind of getting into a danger zone but we're, we're about at the right level because after the big herd moved in I had to try to get the calves up and so the calves have been in here for about three or four days now they're not going to hit it as hard there's only 12 of them I say calves they're yearlings now so we're just basically looking at the height of these grasses to see um, you know what they're doing and how they are and, and how much they've grazed of them uh, we don't want any overgrazing so what we've got here is we've got blue stem I'm not sure if that's big or little and then we've got uh, I'm not sure what this is we've got some silver blue stem should have some big blue stem and then later on in the summer we'll see the pop-up of the Indian grass will come up but this is a good uh, culture of lots of species of grass that they love in this little nine acres so they didn't hammer it too bad but now it's like mowing essentially they kind of come through they're gonna mow see that that's been mowed just like in your yard they're gonna graze it and then it's gonna entice the or be a catalyst to drive the grass to grow a little bit more and uh, just like your yard after you mow it if you don't abuse it and mow it too low it'll come back right and so take off the head of that and uh, it'll come back and regrow and that's what we want so now this is in recovery stage resting stage and uh, yeah that's how it's going so the idea with these guys burn unit nine acres 40 acres got the big joe herd moved into pasture two up here they're way up there roaming by the road ideas for these guys to roll right in here and come up to the barn i've got some extra feed for them and stuff like that so uh, i open this gate and they actually are making their rounds so they may just come follow me in here I'll give them a little space, they may. May just come through here. And then I can just shut that gate. All right, so they should just keep grazing together here. All right guys, here it is. Counting down on our turkey eggs here. These are our Eastern turkeys. They're on the last day right now on the countdown. 28 days on turkey eggs. I think uh, regular chick eggs. Chicken eggs are 21 days. So an, an extra week on the turkeys here, but we're very excited. I started this one two days later, but right here, this big batch of 18 Eastern turkeys. I already see one kind of cracking and moving a little bit. I'm doing everything inside of our barn here to get prepared for it. It's actually bedtime and this typically happens to us just on the timing of it. I'm hoping by in the morning, we have several in this one for sure. This one's two days behind, but um, I'm excited to see them. So I'm getting prepared uh, for all of them, getting their bedding ready and their uh, heat lamp and water, all the good things. So 
pretty soon we'll have some eastern turkey chicks all right got the turkeys cubby hole ready we're gonna put our heat lamp right here i'm gonna give them some space to go back here and hide uh being wild uh like they are unlike chicks you don't have to have some sort of covering here but here we've got some native straw here uh from our bale of hay we had left over and then i put some wood chips here and uh, they can kind of control if they want to get close to the heat lamp they can come up here if they don't they can get back in their little cubby hole and then come up here next to the heat lamp big joe herd is moved last year's calves which are now yearlings are caught here in pasture one big joe herd is over there and pasture two as you can see here red dog season is officially over those aren't the only new babies we have excited for our turkeys and to see how many we hatch. Stay tuned for the next video. We'll keep you updated on those turkeys. Guys, don't forget to check out our website at crosstimbersbison.com. We've got sticks. We have the best bison jerky. If you haven't had it, you can order it now in a 2.5 ounce bag. We've got bundles set up for you and everything right there. 100% American bison, not mixed with any other meats whatsoever. Healthy, high in protein, low in fat, low in cholesterol, all for you. Check it out at crosstimbersbison.com. From our family to yours, Brooks, Marissa, me, happy 4th of July. God bless America. God bless the American bison. Thank you guys for being with us. We're going to keep on bison ranching.